I am more excited to be making this video than I have ever been making any video before. And that's because what I'm about to show you is nothing less than amazing. So I guarantee you, you're going to want to watch this full video because it's going to change your Amazon business. I have a new sourcing strategy that has quickly turned into my main sourcing strategy. And with this method, you are going to have at your fingertips endless products to source through. And it involves storefront stocking. If you're familiar with storefront stocking, basically what you're doing is you are working smarter, not harder. You are going to find sellers that are already selling products that are selling well and selling for profit, and you are going to piggyback off of what they're doing. I guarantee you that you are going to love this strategy and that it is so easy, you will quickly start finding products each and every single day that you can start reselling on Amazon. So without further ado, I wanna jump right right into it and share with you guys real time showing you step by step my new sourcing strategy and just how powerful it is. Let's get into it. I'm going to be using three different features in conjunction. We're going to need the brands tab, the sellers tab, and the storefront stalker. If you put in the time and the hours doing the strategy that I'm about to show you with these three different features, it is impossible not to find brands and products that are profitable to sell on Amazon. I guarantee you that it works and this is by far my favorite way and how I spend most of my hours sourcing and finding new brands to work with and new products to sell. The brands tab is really going to help us to hone in on different brands who are selling well on Amazon and brands that if you're looking for wholesale accounts that aren't too big yet and might want to work with you. And then I'm also using my sellers tab to help me to identify storefronts that have products that are selling really well. Then basically all I need to do from there is analyze the data and piggyback off of what these sellers are doing. So once I found a good seller store, then what I'm going to do is plug them into my storefront stalker. Here's where the magic really happens and I can see everything that they're selling and all of the data around that product to help me make a good buying decision. So let's get into it and I'll show you how it works in real time. I typically like to start here at the Brands tab. We're going to do Advanced Filter. If you have specific categories in mind, you can filter those in. Let's go Grocery and Gourmet Food. For number of products, we want to make sure that this brand actually has a decent catalog of products that are selling well, so I'm going to put that to a minimum of 200. Number of sellers per listing, we don't want a ton of competition, so I'm going to max that out at 6. Estimated monthly sales, let's say from at least 200. We could also filter the number of FBA sellers since those are our main competitors. So maybe there's an average of six sellers overall on that listing, but let's say we only want an average of four of them to be FBA sellers. Since those are the ones that I'm truly competing against as an FBA seller myself. There are so many products that Amazon is not on and already dominating, so I would prefer not to compete with Amazon because they like to be greedy on many of their listings. So I like to max this out and not see products where Amazon is on the listing more than 1% of the time. And this is typically where I set my filters, but feel free to play around with it and set your filters how you feel. Now we'll search. And now I have a list just shy of 2,000 different brands that I can start looking through, seeing how well their products are selling, seeing what other sellers are selling it, so then I can storefront stock those sellers. There are just so many opportunities that now I can jump off of. So for our columns, we have the brand name, number of products that they're selling on Amazon, average number of sellers per listing, average number of FBA sellers, how often Amazon is selling that brand, estimated monthly sales, and sellers. So how I personally source to get through this list as fast as possible and to weed out the ones that aren't going to be of any value to me is I look here at the sellers column first. And that's because, for example, right here I can see a seller is named 100% pure. When I look over here at the brand name, that's the brand. So if the brand themselves is a seller selling the products, that's not good for us. We're going to have very higher chances of selling these branded products and higher chances of sales if the brand themselves are not selling it on Amazon. So I would quickly scroll past that. Looking down at the next one, same thing. I see 4E's Novelty and they're a seller. So we keep scrolling by those. Bakery brand names stick out to me because those products are so easy to sell. We have sprinkles, sugar crystals, cupcake picks. All of these things are small and relatively light. So I really like to look for those types of products. But for this one, I can see they're already selling it. Brands like this catch my eye. Aloha Bay, I can see here, they are not selling on Amazon themselves. And they have over 758 products. 
an average of five and a half sellers per listing. And the sales doesn't look too bad from this distance. So next what I can do is come right here and click on the brand name. And now I can see a ton of really helpful data. Right here is the description. So we have some wellness products, candles, salt, lamps, oils, and that's really awesome to see. Wholesale is available. So if you have all of the paperwork necessary to open these wholesale accounts, now we know that this might be one worth pursuing. And even easier, we don't have to go on Google and try to find where to contact them the URL is right here. But if you're not in the business for opening wholesale accounts, we also have some suppliers right here that you could go to as a distributor of this brand. And better yet, my favorite part is right here, the sellers. So now I can see all of the other sellers who are selling this brand. And why that's so powerful is because now I have access to their entire storefront. I can see all of the products they're selling, all of the other brands that they're selling, which can now rabbit trail me. By looking at their products, I can find new brands I never would have thought of and reach out to those brands or find distributors and start just selling arbitrage. So I'm going to open some of these sellers in another window. And now let's start looking at some of these sellers to see if they're worth storefront stocking. So now I hope you're seeing how these three different features are used in conjunction of each other. We started with the brands tab that showed us a really good brand to start looking at. Then we found some sellers selling that brand. And now from those sellers, once we find a good one that's comparable to us, we're going to throw that into the storefront stalker. Max Warehouse, 85% positive. That's not too bad, especially considering how many ratings they have. Now, the reason why you want to look at the feedback is because if they don't have good feedback, you're not going to want to piggyback off of them and doing what they're doing. Clearly something's not working. Maybe the products that they're choosing aren't in good condition. Something's not well if they don't have good positive feedback and you don't want to copy what they're doing. So you're going to want to choose sellers that have good feedback. But the ratings right here tells me that this seller is a huge seller. They're probably out of our league because ratings are hard to get. Really, for every 100 to 200 sales, you're probably only going to get one rating out of that. So that's telling me that this seller has a ton of products, a ton of daily sales, and they probably have a ton of wholesale accounts, which if you're just doing arbitrage, they might be out of your league because you might not be able to find these same wholesale accounts that they're able to find, and therefore you're not going to be able to piggyback off of what they're doing. But let's storefront stock and take a look at their products. So I'm just going to come down now and right here where it says number of products we're going to hit storefront stalker and now everything that you need to know about that product to decide whether or not it's something you should be pursuing to buy and resell on Amazon is right here for you in one place. Every single product that that seller has is here and all of the data pertaining to those products is here as well. So we have some glue at the top, air filters, plant spikes, kind of all over the place, a wide variety. Now, where should your eyes be looking in determining if the product is worth pursuing? Well, first I like to look at the quick glance of the Keepagraph. Right here, all of this orange color is indicating Amazon. So I know that Amazon is on this listing and it seems to be they're on it a lot. And the fact that this is bait, I know that that's probably probably a pesticide and you can't just sell pesticides. You have to have additional clearance and training from Amazon to sell those products. So let's look at this glue. The graph looks pretty good. Amazon is only on it a little bit. The sales rank is super strong, but the price here is probably what we're not going to be able to do. Now I can see at a quick glance that there are seven FBA sellers and 29 overall sellers on this glue listing. The numbers that I am looking at to see if I could probably make this product work or not are my break even and the lowest price. Price. For the break even price, this is essentially what all the Amazon fees total up to. So if I found this product at Walmart for $1.87, sold it for that $5.99, after the Amazon fees, I would make zero. So when I'm determining, do I think I could get the product for a price that's going to bring a profit? I'm looking here and the number that I need to buy that glue for has to be less than my break even. And clearly I know that this 12 count of glue, I'm not going to be able to just source at Walmart or Target for less than $1.87, unless it's maybe on clearance that day, but otherwise I'm not going to find it for that price. So that would tell me keep scrolling. So that's how you kind of maneuver through looking at this data quickly. Check the graph and then look over here at your break even price. Think to yourself, what do you think the going cost of this product is? Can you get it less than what that break even says? Next, we see quite a bit of Amazon, lots of orange on those listings. Rustoleum is going to be hazmat, so unless you have hazmat training through Amazon Seller Central, you're going to want to skip products like that. So this seller, storefront stocking him, I can tell it's not really working out. A lot of the products are going to be restricted for my account. A lot of the products are being sold by Amazon, so I'm just going to X out of his and go to my next seller that we found. Now let's try Healthy Trader. 80% positive 
positive, over 8,000 ratings, so not as far out of our ball field as the last seller, but still a lot of products. Let's just jump in and see what their storefront looks like under our stalker. So we have some greenies treats, Amazon's on them, and the break even. I definitely couldn't get it for less than that price. And now we have a bundle here of Twinnings London decaffeinated green tea bags. The break even is actually very high. Only three FBA sellers, but what I'm noticing here are a couple of red flags. Number one, Amazon's clearly on the listing, and number two, the buy box appears to be in a spike. But what I'm going to do now is click on this keep a chart so I can see even more data. Now we can filter this historical data. We have the one year glance here. So in the past year, right here, these gaps of white in between this orange cream color, that's when Amazon does jump off. So they don't jump off very often, but that doesn't mean you can't get on the listing. You just want to take an additional step before you do to make sure Amazon shares the buy box. What I'm really interested in seeing is that the buy box is typically at that $20 plus mark. Back in March of 2022, a year ago, the buy box was $22 and 14 cents. And now it is $26 and 52 cents. So even though it's a little higher, I can see across time, it typically is always above that $20 mark. So that's good. We wouldn't want to jump on seeing it at $26 if the data showed that typically it's only selling for $10, $15. Let's zoom it into just the last month. And if I wanted to look at, say, just the past week, I could even filter that in manually myself here. So in the past month, our buy box has jumped from $23.99, which is what Amazon has it listed at, to $26.52. So I would say it is on a little spike right now and you would definitely want to keep that in mind when it comes to what price you're able to source it at because if there's only three or four dollars profit at this $26 mark, what if the buy box jumps back down to that $22 mark? Now there's not going to be any profit. So it's always a great idea to click into that keep a chart once something does catch your eye to really look at what is this doing in a month, in three months, in the past year. Look at all of that historical data. So say I wanted to pursue these tea bags. So now what I can do is click right here, the G and search on Google, or right beside it, I can search it on Google Shopping. Let's just bring it up into Google. Now what I'm also going to wanna do at this point is pull up the actual Amazon listing. Because when I'm trying to source the product, I wanna see that listing so I can make Make sure I'm getting the exact same match. So we're going to click right here on ASIN and now we can see exactly what we're supposed to be finding when we're sourcing on Google. So we have a four pack here, 20 counts each, winter spice and Christmas tea. Then clicking on that little Google button, it's going to pop me right over here and I can start looking to see where am I seeing that tea for the lowest price. So once you've found the product and you've made sure it's a match to your listing, now what you're going to do is pull up the calculator to make sure there's profit there. And to do that, we're going to come right here beside the Google button and open the calculator. Now I can see my breakdown of the sellers, estimated sales, product dimensions, and right down here, my calculator. So if you were able to find all of that tea, let's say for $12.50, very light, so let's just throw in 40 cents to estimate shipping to Amazon, then boom, you can quickly see using this calculator what your estimated profit and ROI would be. And then once you're tired of that brand and those sellers, then you go on to the next. Let me backtrack for one quick second. Something else you might wanna do with the filters to help to weed out even more brands that you're not going to be able to sell is to come right here to the average number of sellers per listing and set this to be around at least three. And the reason is across time, if there's only one, two sellers on that listing, that's a really good indicator that that is brand protected or private labeled and you're not going to be able to sell those anyways. So to just weed that problem out, I usually set my minimum here to two and a half sellers average per listing. So right under Aloha Bay, we have Amigo. Good rating, a lot of products, not too many sellers. Amazon's not on there a lot and Amigo themselves is not selling the products. So that all looks good. Average product price, that seems a little high, but maybe they're just selling a really wide variety of products and some are low and some are really high and the product weight is under three pounds so that's good let's check this out not a ton of data for this one but we can see horse supplies saddlery so it seems like this brand has something to do with horses but if I wanted to see all of that brands products I can come right down and click right here to view we have a couple of toys and games and now we have some pet supplies so it seems like this brand is kind of across different categories and we also have some amigo brand coffee so yeah clearly we're across 
several different niches right now. But if I wanted to just take a look, a peek at what these different sellers who are selling this brand are also selling, I'm just going to come right here to show all under sellers. And here I can see all of the data for all of the sellers. Their feedback, number of products, number of brands, what their business name is, and where they're located. If we want to see all of their products in the storefront stock review and look at all of the data, we're going to click this little I. And now we are in the storefront stock review. We can see all of their products with all of the data. Hopefully you're seeing just how powerful this sourcing method is and how it is limitless. You can spend hours upon hours upon hours just doing this each and every day and you're going to find new brands every time, new sellers every time, new products every single time. Access to all of Amazon and all of the data and all of the products right here. And you can keep jumping from brands into sellers, storefront stocking those sellers, piggybacking off of what they're doing. I guarantee you, if you put in the work doing this sourcing this way, it's impossible not to find products to sell on Amazon. Let's just jump into one more brand together and I'll run you through that same cycle. And then I want to show you one other way that I'm able to use the storefront stalker. So this one caught my eye good ratings, lots of products, lots of sales, and the brand themselves is not on it. So if I want to just get a feel for what type of products they're selling, I can click here to products. And now we can see all of the products that that brand is selling, and we can even filter it out here. So maybe I want to see the products first that are getting the most estimated sales. I'm going to click this column header, and then it filters from low to high or high to low. So it looks like we have some syrups here. Enough sellers to say that it's not something that is going to get us an IP alert probably, but not too much competition where we might be able to come in and make some sales, especially if the estimated sales is over 4,000 and there's only four FBA sellers on this, that's definitely something worth pursuing. So I can see that these products look like they could be profitable. So now what I want to do is go back and we're going to click that brand name so that we can see all of the sellers. And here they are. Because why work harder and not smarter? These sellers are already selling the product and they probably aren't selling the product if it's not profitable. So why are we going to start from scratch and look through all of the products mode in hats? Instead, we're going to work smarter by looking at what the sellers are already selling because they've already found ones that are profitable. Good description here. We can see they have a lot of syrups and mixes and here's the URL if you have those wholesale capabilities and you want to reach out. If you don't, we have a couple suppliers here that you can go to as your distributor for this brand. So let's start storefront stocking these guys. I'm going to start right at the top. And I like what I see already with this Veronica's Emporium. Could have a little bit better feedback here, but it's above 80% and there's only 110 ratings. So this seller doesn't seem like they're way out of our league. They don't have 80,000 ratings. So they might have some good products that we can piggyback off of. Let's now go to Storefront Stalker. And now we have access to her entire catalog, 927 products. There has got to be some products in here that are profitable. So now all it takes is some time some diligence, looking at all the data on the Keepa, finding it where you can source it using these Google buttons, and then what's the lowest price? Now plug it into that calculator and see if you can pull a profit. Now, if I only wanted to check out those Monin products, which is the original reason why I found the seller store, I can type that in at the top for brand, and now I'm only seeing those listings that they're on. And this actually looks like something that I personally would want to pursue. The Keepa looks good. I don't see Amazon selling on it. Not a ton of competition but enough where I can say that this brand is going to want me and allow me to sell their products. And the break even price seems really good. For one liter of syrup, if we can get this wholesale, I'm pretty sure we'd be able to get it for less than that amount. Now, if we could get it for this price here, $7.66, we know we would be seeing 25% ROI. So that really is my goal when I am sourcing. I know I want to get it for around this price and even less would be better because that's just going to increase my profit margins. Super powerful method. You don't have to go into this with any brands in mind, with any sellers in mind. Set those filters and now they're all going to come up to you. Keep scrolling through those brands that look good, finding those sellers that look good, then pull them up in the storefront stalker and start looking at what they're already finding to be profitable. Now do the same thing. See if you can source those products and start selling those products as well. Now let me show you that second way that I use the storefront stalker really successfully. For this strategy, what I 
I do is I come to Amazon first and I start looking at brands and products that I know I can get my hands on and that are good listings. So for example, Clinique is a great brand to sell on Amazon. It sells very well and the price point is typically high enough where there is profit to be made. So this right here is a great listing. What I want to do now to find a seller that I want to storefront stock is go underneath that photo and look at the Keepa. Now we're going to come to data and now offers. What I want to do here is find a good seller. So I'm going to scroll over to where it says first seen. And now I filtered this. So right here I can see this seller is a new seller on this listing. They were first seen four hours ago. And right here, these sellers have been on this listing, this top one for 51 months. Clearly the seller knows what they're doing and clearly they found profit in this listing because they were on it 51 months ago and they're still on it. That's an indicator to me that this seller is experienced and if they're selling arbitrage, I wanna know what they're selling so I can do the same thing. So right here, I'm going to grab that seller's number. And another way you can find the seller's store ID is by coming up to the top and it's these last numbers right here. So we know that seller knows what they're doing. They have a lot of products. They've been on that listing a lot. There's a really good chance they're going to have products in there we can piggyback off of. Let's now go to Storefront Stalker and we're going to paste that seller's ID. We could even get picky here if there were certain categories that we wanted to see. Maybe we didn't want to see all of their products. We only wanted to see grocery, for example. We could filter that in. Maybe we're not interested in products that are over a certain weight. So if I don't want to go over three pounds, I could set that to three pounds max. And now you can even set the BSR. So let's say I only want to see products that are under 180,000 and just eliminate products that have a bad BSR and aren't selling well. Now we can search and there is a wealth of potential products right here. We can see some Wilton pans. Those shouldn't be too hard to get your hands on. Check the Keepa, look at the break even, see what that price is that you need to get it for, and then start searching with these Google tabs to find those products. Get the price, throw it into your profit calculator, and if there's profit to be made, buy it, list it, sell it, Wash, rinse, repeat. You just do this over and over and over again, and I guarantee you, you are going to find more products to sell than you know what to do with. After doing this strategy, you're probably going to have to get yourself a prep center because you're probably not going to be able to prep all of the products that you're able to find. Before doing this strategy, I often just kind of felt lost. I didn't know which sourcing strategy to do for that day, didn't know where to start, and now I don't have to worry about that at all. By using my brands feature, my seller's feature and my storefront stalker, endless potential here, endless avenues that it leads me to, different brands each day, different products each day. And by doing this, this is how I'm really able to scale and keep building my catalog and keep finding those brands to establish relationships with. I hope you can see now why this is so powerful and why I guarantee if you start using it, you are going to find products to sell. And it's not very hard. Once you start playing around, you see how those brands lead you to the sellers, the sellers throw them into the storefront stocking. It's just a process that's happening over and over and over. It really doesn't get better than this. I'm so excited to share this with you guys because I know it's going to help you and I know that it works. And I'm so excited because I know once you guys use this, you're going to be just as excited. So give it a try, get in there, start looking at the brands, the sellers, start storefront stocking, good sellers that you're finding and your Amazon business will absolutely grow. I hope that this was helpful for you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and letting me show you this new sourcing method that we have. And I hope that this sourcing method is just as good for you as it is for me. I'll catch you in the next video.